So uh, I have a few slides out of this presentation that I'll show you later, but I really just am going to kind of talk a little bit. Um, so it was really interesting seeing those slides up at the beginning, kind of with the evolution of cinema, because that kind of mimicked my entire career. My career kind of followed that whole thing from by the point I got interested, which was Star Wars, um, all the way up to where we are now with virtual reality. So um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that and where we were and how we got to where we are with virtual reality now. So. Um, you know, we all started, my first job was on Titanic, and uh, I was an animator, and the whole thing back then was, you know, we were one of the first people to be experimenting with virtual extras, and really trying to animate those characters and make them look real in that sinking ship, um, and that was the really, really hard part, It's getting those images out and making those characters look real. Uh, then I went on to Spider-Man, and uh, we, uh, I saw Paul Devetic back there, he uh, helped us out with uh, all the light stage stuff and uh, creating really, really realistic characters with, you know, um, bright reflectivity and all of those response that you would see from all the different lighting situations. And so you're creating really, really hyper-realistic characters. And then we had that Spider-Man, you know, swinging through the whole digital city, so we had to recreate and capture, oh, there you are, capture all of the um, downtown New York and recreate that for the final battle sequence. And so that was using LiDAR and photogrammetry and all of these new techniques to capture all of this, basically creating that virtual world um, that we were just talking about. Um, and then, of course, we went to 3D, right? So we started shooting 3D movies and we started rendering in 3D and displaying and projecting in 3D. And so everything just keeps getting more and more complicated, right? And that's kind of where I'm going with this is that, you know, the imagery is becoming more complicated, it's becoming more photorealistic. So, you know, you can't tell the difference between virtual and real. Um, and also the data needs are becoming exponential, right? We had, first we had um, regular cinema, then we had 2K cinema, then we had stereo, then we have 4K now, and I used to work for, I came from Sony Pictures originally, so, you know, Sony was a big driver of 3D technology and technology in general, display and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, the data needs, just, we were gonna be crushed by that, you know, from stereo to 4K to 4K stereo, and now we're talking about um, you know, high dynamic range, I mean, really wide color gamuts, and we're talking about, you know, high frame rate. You've seen The Hobbit uh, in high frame rate, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so all of these things together are just massive amounts of data needs. And we were always wondering, how are we going to support this? One of those things, right? Be it 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, or stereo, or 4K. Well, now we come to virtual reality, and we have to support all of it. <laughs> Right, because that's really going. What I see to be the driver of all this technology together is virtual reality, which requires stereo. It requires a high dynamic range. It requires a high frame rate, so you get persistence. You don't get flicker. Um, all of these things are really virtual reality is what's really going to push all this tech into the home and all at once. Right, um, and these are huge amounts of data needs, um, both for you know rendering and for capture and for post. Um, post is a big issue, as I was discussing earlier. Um, with a few people around the table. Um, the tools really aren't there yet for virtual reality. So let me just pull this up. And I will show you some of our um, camera systems from Jaunt. Can you turn the projector off? That's not actually just trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs> So this is our first generation camera prototype, um, which has 24 cameras going all around. So this is what we affectionately call the Death Star. Um, and you know, this was the first experimental prototype to see what kind of overlap that was necessary to create a full 363 3D image. So now not only are we working in high frame rate and high dynamic range and in stereo, um, but we're doing it in 360 degrees for virtual reality. And this is one of the things um, that's separate and different from rendered virtual reality. In virtual production and in rendered virtual reality in a game engine, where you have a real-time graphic engine that's driving that, you can move around your environment and you can you know, fully explore it and you have a lot of flexibility there. In cinematic virtual reality, we're trying to generate tools and techniques that allow you to do some of that with a filmed sequence, right? Living within that world. And that's why those technologies, the high frame rate and the high dynamic range and all of those are so important because the high resolution is because you want it to seem as real as possible, right? And we're getting there, but there's still a lot to, um, oops. Apparently 
ITV is not working. <laughs> Uh, so that was our first gen prototype. This is our current production camera. So this is the workhorse of what we're producing all of our content with. And this is a, a kind of a paired down system. This looks like a spaceship. So we went from the Death Star to a spaceship. And uh, it has 16 cameras. So 12 around and two up, two down. And this is a modified system with GoPros. Um, and so, you know, GoPros, if you've ever shot on others with those, there's a lot of issues. They don't really have a lot of dynamic range, and the colors may not be. Um, you know, true tone to life, especially with skin tones and all that. So we modify them a lot, put heat sinks on them, and so forth. But all of this stuff um, goes into our computational photography algorithms, which stitches it all together to create a sphere with a virtual camera inside, a virtual stereo camera pair, that allows you to interpolate those different cameras and create the left eye and right eye spherical image to create a full 360 degree 3D dome that you can live in. Um, but more importantly, this is our latest camera that we just came out with, which is called the Neo camera. And it's really amazing because it's one of the first cameras that was really built from the ground up for virtual reality. And this is a big deal because up to this point, there's only really been all these GoPro solutions and homemade and ad hoc solutions that stitch a bunch of those together. But this was built from the ground up for VR. Um, it has 24 cameras all around, so 16 around, uh, four up and four down. It has the high dynamic range that I was talking about, which is great, um, enabling you to capture from very you know, dark to very light images. Um, much higher color fidelity um, in terms of natural colors and skin tone. Um, and it's all synced, which is one of the biggest issues. And it's got a global shutter. And those two things together are very important because all these other solutions up to this point haven't allowed to really you know, have those images synced and not have shutter artifacts and all that with the different GoPros, because so it's very hard to put them all together and have them talk to each other. So it's a really great camera. Um, and this is kind of gives you an idea of the uh, stitching that goes on. So up above is all the different images from each of those different cameras, and there's a lot of overlap. And those images have to find um, light points in the images, unwarp the images, fit them together, color compensate so that the color is basically the same between them, because every sensor is going to be different. Really importantly, you have to balance the exposure because with all those cameras and filming around at 360 degrees, you're going to have very light spots, you're going to have very dark spots. You're not doing that frame that we're used to in 2D. So it's really hard to shoot for this stuff. And then it finally, it stitches it all together and blends it into the final image that you see on the bottom. Um, I just wanted to show you. So this is the image like you'll see. The interpolated images between the different cameras, you can create the stereo projection that you see in the middle. Um, but I just wanted to talk about, um, once you get all these images, the biggest part that we're having now, the biggest problem that we're having is um, in post. And that is all of these tools, a lot of them that you'll see out on the SIGGRAPH floor, be it editing, um, be it um, uh, color correction, be it visual effects, all of these aren't really designed for this massive amount of data. 4K by 4K images is what we're doing, right? Because it's 360 degrees, 3D stereo. Um, so we're working with all these companies to come up with a process where all these tools will actually work. You can actually fit things through um, an editing system and, you, and view it out of a head-mounted display, right out of your editing tool without having to render things out. That you can bring it into a color correction tool and it's going to you know, help you see these images and help you do all the color compensation between different <coughs> images. So all of these things are coming online and you know, we're going to see them in the next, next, hopefully, well, beginning of next year. A lot of the tools will be coming out at the end of the year. But in the end, creatively, this is a completely new medium, right? And the way you direct for it and the way you stage for it, totally different. Because you have to account for that 360 degrees. So you know, how do you stage for that? Where do you put the crew? That's our biggest problem. It's called the, you know, the you have to go hide behind a tree or underneath the, the tripod. Or if you're the director, sometimes we're putting the director in the action so that you're actually the action that you're directing, you're in it, so that you blend into the crowd, right? Um, we're experimenting with a lot of remote viewing solutions that will mitigate that, but it's very difficult to hide either the director or the crew or your lighting environment, all that stuff's very hard. So it's a creative challenge, and those are all the uh, tools and, that we're working on in the future to make that a uh, smoother process and develop the new cinematic language. Thanks. <laughs>